Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindy and here we talk about language learning, productivity, and mindset. So you've come to the right place if you're looking for inspiration on language learning or ways to make your language learning process faster and more efficient. Today I am answering an email question from somebody who is learning Farsi. First of all, that is so cool. What a beautiful language that you have chosen. So the email is from Irene and I'm just going to read it for you because this is what we're going to be talking about today. She says, whenever I spend time learning, I usually do so for an hour or so. However, after spending this time, I notice I get a slight headache, get very tired, and am unable to focus properly on other work for the rest of the day. Sounds pretty relatable. I feel like my brain is taking energy to process whatever I've learned throughout the day. I have the same problem to different degrees when I listen to something in Farsi or after taking a lesson. It's quite annoying because I love studying Farsi, but as a university student, I really can't afford to lose my whole day to it. Now, this is a really common problem with language learners. Especially at the beginning of your language learning journey, you feel very motivated and excited. And you think, if you look at your calendar and say, I have an entire hour to dedicate to languages, you can fill up that whole hour studying. But at the end, you'll feel so exhausted. Why does this happen? Well, for one, our brain cannot learn that much new information at once in such a concentrated time period. I'm not so sure about the statistics, but I've heard many times it's been said that your brain can only learn 15 new words each day. That sounds reasonable to me. I think 15 is good to manage. And I've noticed if I try and memorize long word lists, I can't get past like 20 words until I start confusing them or just getting exhausted. So the key here is to do less, but more consistently. So instead of doing one hour a day or two hours every week, try and cut it to maybe 15 minutes in three sections of your day every day. My friend Alex Rawlings has a great book about language learning, and I think he called it the 15-30-15 method. And that's basically if you have one hour in your day to learn a language, so one hour of free time, spend 15 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at lunch, and 15 minutes at the end of the day. And by doing that, you get one hour of learning in, but spread out into different parts. This is especially good when you have a fixed schedule. So you know, you wake up at 8 a.m. and you have hopefully 15 minutes around breakfast time to yourself where you can review some vocabulary. Then around lunch, you can give yourself half an hour to get some active studying in. If you're working with a podcast, for instance, you can use this half an hour to listen to a new episode and transcribe it, write down new sentences. You could use an app that you enjoy, or you can look through a textbook in that focused study session. That middle part, the most, most of your time should go to focused active studying. And then at the end of the day, for another 15 minutes, you can review what you've learned. And then the next morning, you quickly review a bit of what you did the previous day, and then you go over any new information. So my recommendation is splitting up your time instead of one focused study session, break it up into smaller parts throughout the day. Another thing to look at is how much dead time do you have? How much free time do you have? If you commute somewhere in the day and you know that you have 15 minutes on a train, or if you take a walk every morning, maybe that's some time to get a podcast listening in. Or if you know that every night before bed you have a routine where you have maybe half an hour of free time, you can use that to integrate a bit of language learning into your day. Personally, I don't like to sit down for a very long time to study. I was interested to see what people on Twitter do. So, so I ran a poll on Twitter asking how long is a single active study session for you? And the options were 10 to 15 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, one hour or more than an hour. After 253 votes, uh, most people said 30 to 45 minutes. So it seems that this is what's working for most people, definitely under an hour. I just thought it was interesting to see what other people are doing. Something else that you can consider is your level in the language. I find it a lot easier to listen to a lot of content in Korean or to have a long active study session in Korean because I've been learning Korean for almost 11 years now. However, with a language that I'm still a beginner in, like Tagalog or Vietnamese, my brain hurts and I get so tired after a few minutes. 
I also adjusted the amount of time I spend on lessons. For Hungarian, I have a 45-minute lesson on italki once a week. For Tagalog, I used to have one hour. And my thinking was, this is a new language to me. I need to focus for an hour. I need my tutor to tell me what to do. This grammar is hard. Definitely need an hour. And I realized I was getting like, my brain was really hurting after maybe 30, 40 minutes. So I cut my Tagalog lesson down to half an hour. Take it as an iterative process. See how you feel, track your energy throughout the day and adjust things as you go along. I love defending the idea of adjusting things as you go. So that's why I keep a language learning tracking journal. So I can see that um, maybe spending an hour on a lesson is just not productive for me and I'm gonna adjust as I go along. And finally, the idea of learning styles. This seems to have changed over the recent years. Uh, when I grew up and I was going to school, they were focusing so hard on discover your language or discover your learning style. Are you a visual learner, kinesthetic learner, and so forth. And as the studies have progressed, people have actually said like, this is false, like no one is a specific type of learner. I don't know, maybe, but I think there are some good principles we can take from it in terms of spicing up our language learning routines. For instance, I like to walk around and move around a lot. This is good if you have a short attention span. Uh, like myself, it's just not fun to sit down for a very long time. So sometimes I stand up and I walk around while I'm reading my textbook, especially awesome for podcasts. I know I always talk about this, but I just love podcasts because you can, you can do anything. You can wash the dishes while listening to a podcast. And then maybe just getting creative, writing out stuff, making a mind map, using different colors. That's more like the visual learner. So see if you could change up your study session. Maybe you were trying to do too much uh, too difficult content at once. So be sure that you adjust your study style, try some different things, use a different app, and also don't sit for too long on difficult things, trying to get all the vocabulary you can. Start small. And finally, tracking your energy levels to see maybe when in the day do you feel good and energized? When can you fit in maybe a morning study session, a short bit in the afternoon? and so forth. Something else I've been really interested in recently is how a menstrual cycle actually affects mood and hormones. So I've realized that during a certain part of the month, I feel extremely like low and down and I have no energy. Whereas another week in the month, I have so much energy and motivation to study. And this put me on a path of research and documenting and investigation to see when in the month uh, can I optimize my study routine. So I've been tracking this for about five months and I have clear enough um, like trackers and stats to see for myself. So sorry if this is too much information, but it's just biology and facts. So after tracking my cycles uh, for about five months, I have enough information to know which weeks during the month I will have high energy. During those weeks, I try to do more productive, active study sessions. If I'm also feeling active and productive, I will film a lot of YouTube's, uh, YouTube schedules, YouTube videos. And then later in other weeks, when my energy is a bit lower or more introspective, you can read up about that uh, during your cycle, you might be more introspective versus more outrospective. So when I'm outrospective, I'll go out and practice with people, uh, practice languages, film videos. When I'm introspective, I take that time to reflect on my learning schedules, my learning methods, I'll update my language journal. What you can do is just track how you feel throughout the day or the month so that you can find these optimal patches of energy. I have a blog post about um, ways to integrate language learning into a busy schedule. So all of my tips and information are over there. I hope this video has helped you. I'm also experimenting with my sound setup. I have a pretty cheap microphone and it's, I don't know if it's sounding great because my built-in camera mic is not good. And on one of my recent videos, some people commented and said, you sound like a robot and don't record in stereo. And I got a lot of comments on the sound quality. So first of all, sorry. I'm still learning. I'm a tech noob, even though I work in tech, sorry, but I'm trying to save up for a new microphone. So rest assured that I am trying to sort this out. Um, I don't have Patreon because I don't want people to like pay to see my content. Um, I want to provide all my tips on my blog uh, for free to you guys. 
But uh, if you do appreciate the hard work that I put into creating, editing these videos, as well as putting all my resource recommendations and study tips on my blog, feel free to contribute to the value of a coffee. If you want to buy me a virtual coffee, there's a link in description to Kofi where you can help uh, contribute directly towards what I'm saving up for, for a better microphone. That was a mouthful. Okay, I think that's it for today. And I wish you all the best of luck with your language learning journey. Remember to keep it fun, it's not a race. Keep iterating on what works for you and eventually you'll find that it's becoming smoother and smoother and easier to learn a language as you go along. Thank you guys so much for watching and as usual, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.